One Piece. This is One Piece chapter 1026, The Pivotal Clash. Uh, we had a break from One Piece last week, and it's finally back. Thank goodness. Uh, last we left off. Be very sad, yeah. Yeah, I know. Like- <laughs> we had a good streak, but now it's back. Uh, last we left off, Luffy uh, pulled up to Kaido's face, riding uh, Momonosuke, who is now a fully formed adult dragon. Uh, pretty fucking cool. And um, we start off at the flower capital where the big festival is happening in Wano. Um, we get a little uh, glimpse of the uh, swordsmith guy. I forget his name. Uh, he's and his last like time seeing uh, Otama. Oh, the Tengu mask. Yeah, uh, before she uh, headed off to Onigashima to help in the battle. Uh, And, you know, he's like, I wonder if she's okay. Well, no way to know. She's across the sea now. And in the distance, you see Onigashima pulling up from the clouds. Uh, Pretty terrifying. Uh, But they can't really see it because it's covered in dragon clouds, I guess. Uh, Dragon clouds. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that it was a fact? Yeah. That dragon summoned thunder clouds? Yes. Didn't you know? Didn't you uh, read up on your dragon biology? No. Well, that's a shame on you, bud. We t- we went to the yeah. same high school. You should have taken notes on dragon biology. True. Man, I, mean, I should have been cutting class. <laughs> Shit. Uh, not me. I'm, I was, I'm a good student. Uh, he's using the dragon clouds to lift Onigashima in the first place. That's how he's doing it. Uh but anyway, uh, we get the uh, one of the uh, weird speakerphone people that is scattered around uh, the Onigashima is now narrating what's happening. Is just like on to- on this on- up on the roof at this moment, young Master Yamato is bruised and bloody, and in the air, a sight that makes me question my own eyes: two dragons face to face. Pretty cool. Uh, the battle just starts uh, off from there. Kaido just immediately charges up his blast breath, uh, and <laughs> Luffy just tries to get Momonosuke to like launch another fireball back, and he's like, "I don't fucking know how to do that." <laughs> uh, so you know, they do- they manage to dodge the attack. Uh, Luffy tells Momo something before just jumping up and uh, using uh, his third gear to knock Kaido on his head. Uh, using the giant fist like before. Um, we learned that Luffy has ordered Momonosuke to try to bite Kaido and hold on to him, prevent him from moving. Uh, and throughout this moment, like Kaido, uh, Momonosuke is just like reliving his trauma basically from when Kaido came and uh, eradicated his house and his family. Uh, so, but you know, he fights past it. And while Kaido is down, uh, he comes in and he bites Kaido, holding him down. Uh, and uh, Kaido comes up like, what are you doing, boy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you doing, boy? <laughs> Looking back. <laughs> yeah, his big ass neck. He's like, oh. <laughs> uh, But you got to eat the booty like groceries. <laughs> That's his oh, neck, Brian. God. It's not his booty. <laughs> uh so, yeah, I guess Kaido is about to do something, but that's when uh, Luffy comes in and punches him again, sends him flying. His, like, whole dragon self just, like, falls to a crater over there. Uh, and at that time, uh, we cut back to the treasure repository where the clouds have now blocked the moon, which is the source of the, uh, I think it's the Shulong form that the minks take. The Sulong, yeah. Yeah, the Sulong form that the minks take ultimate power up and without that uh they start losing to jack and prospero respectively uh both of them are talking shit uh jack especially yeah. jack is like man if you gotten one more good hit i probably would have been finished <laughs> but you know what too bad for you no no moon uh cat viper is also down prospero is significantly more shit talking uh <laughs> he said uh don't blame the moon for your troubles you didn't have bad luck I just got overwhelmingly good luck, boss cat. <laughs> Pedoine. Pedoine. Uh, so, yeah, we cut back to the rooftop um, where uh, Luffy is yelling at Momonosuke. He's like, hey, that's an emperor of the sea you just took a bite out of. Is there a single left in- thing in- left in the world that you for you to be scared of? And I'm like, encouraging words. That's very true, I guess. 
uh, what else you got to fear? Right. Um, and shit, this nigga's on, on on Luffy's crew that can't say that. Yeah, yeah. None of these people bit a dragon, or bit the <laughs> warlords. Um, down below, they can actually hear all this entire exchange because I guess the speakerphone person is still up there relaying everything that's happening. Uh, and over the loudspeaker, we hear Luffy uh, proclaim to Momonosuke to not to worry about Kaido, that he, he'll guarantee you he'll win. And everybody's like, yeah! Everybody below is like, yeah! Uh, celebrating. Uh, they're like, yeah, take him down. It's pretty cool. Kaido goes into his half-man, half-dragon form, uh, takes a big swing of his uh, big club, and they clash hockeys together. And the resulting impact splits the clouds, allowing the moon to be revealed. And that's when we see Dogstorm and Cat Viper coming in and absolutely finishing uh, Prospero and uh, Jack in one blow. Uh, And the chapter ends with one little panel of fucking Orochi, who is still alive and like, whoa, he killed Jack. I guess that's not my problem. And that's where the chapter ends. Pure garbage. Yeah, what a what a trash man. Uh, I thought this chapter was pretty cool. Uh, one fun thing to note, uh, Josh, do you remember uh, the last time the clouds split? Yeah. When? When Luffy's dad dragon? No. Used like no. Okay. Then no, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a callback to when Whitebeard and Shanks clashed that one time. Uh, I think right before the Skypier arc, like they clashed swords and they split the skies. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is pretty. Pretty cool. Uh, indicating yeah, that Luffy's on that level yeah, now. Luffy has a rise to the level of the fucking warlords. <laughs> for real, for real this time. <laughs> Uh, he can be. Oh, did I say Warlord? The emperors. emperors. Yeah, I call myself Brian. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got. I got <laughs> me. I got me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was really cool. Um, uh, and I like that it had the residual effect of uh, releasing the moon, so that Dogstorm and Cat Viper could just finish. Hopefully, like Jack just stays down this time. I mean, come on, he's had nothing but L's. He's been all defeated this entire... Ever since he showed up. Let's just leave it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, But, yeah, this is a cool chapter. I, I had a good time reading it. Um, Fun, fun cool thing. Hope I'm glad that we don't have a break next week, so we could get probably some more uh, Luffy-Kaido battle. But um, what, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Prayers up. To eat your order. Oh yeah. Um, Brian, do you have any thoughts on uh, One Piece? RGC. Whoa! Certified <laughs> RGC. Certified RGC. Certified RGC. Looks like we don't have Brian figured out after all. <laughs> this was some fucking amazing One Piece writing. It as in a hole for a whole chapter, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was just so nice. Like, um, I I watched a video about this about this chapter, and I was like, okay, now I understand. Now I understand this chapter has to be RGC because of the way that Oda kind of set up the ending of the chapter and all that stuff. It was just so fucking well developed, and all, everything was just so properly set up. Uh, for the epic reveal at the end of Luffy being able to split the clouds and shit. It's just such a good chapter, man. I just want more One Piece. Give me two two chapters of One Piece <laughs> a week and I'll be happy. Yeah, if only, huh? Uh, wouldn't that be something? In a perfect world. Oh. There's, there's an alternate universe where Oda is strong enough to release two episodes, of, two chapters a week. Yeah. Where he's just a mega manga artist. <laughs> but... Unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, this is not my RGC, but I it was really good. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, any, uh, I, I don't have any more thoughts, really. It was I, it was a cool moment. What Brian said pretty much encapsulated everything, uh, top to bottom, pretty fun. Uh, do you have any final thoughts before we move on, Josh? Um, what this chapter made me think about was Momo's uh, development. I think they 
I think I think Oda's done a, a good job with showing, like he's done a good job of selling it, like this like meek cowardly kid to the point where like you know he's gone through a lot of trauma. You know, even, you know, even after what happened uh, before the time skip or before he was warped to the future, mm-hmm. um, he he went from losing his family and his whole entire world really to experiencing um, trials and tribulations with Luffy's crew. And um, watching, you know, uh, I guess, I guess, quote unquote, decent role models that at least work hard to achieve what they want to do. That's yeah. at least they're not, you know, sleazy lying bastards like uh, like the Hydra Man over here. Hey, they're worse um, people to follow, I guess. <laughs> huh? They're worse people to follow, I guess. Right. So now, you know, so the fact that he's gotten aged up. And which is probably irreversible that he's going to be an adult on the other end of this. Yeah. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to me. He has, he has grown up uh, through everything that he's gone through. Like he basically is a man. Yeah. Um, Um, Yeah. Luffy has also been like his little mentor here and there. Like even back in Punk Hazard and in Dress Rosa, you would see like, Luffy be like, stop crying. Why are you crying? <laughs> like, Adam, just like giving that tough love coaching uh, throughout oh the entire God. series since uh, Momonosuke shows up. And Zo, he was the one who like, like pushed Momonosuke to command Zo to do, to take action against Jack. Uh, it's It's been, you know, continuing payoff of Luffy being like the maker of this Shogun and being a good influence and a good uh, example of what a leader is. Uh, to this young man who's about to rule this entire country. I mean, Odin learned a lot from Gold Roger, too. Yeah, Gold Roger and Whitebeard were his mentors in a way because, like, he left with Whitebeard first. And, like, they were... And it's funny because, like, Whitebeard usually, whenever he takes people in, he calls them their son or their daughter. And he called Odin his brother. So everybody... that was He was the only one to ascend to that point where he's basically the uncle of the, white hair, uh, the Whitebeard pirates, essentially. Wow. It is wild. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, Odin was <laughs> Odin was a was a real nigga. Yeah, what he really was. Say? I think Odin's flashback, I guess this is like a tangent a little bit, but his uh flashback is the longest flashback in One Piece. It's like a whole volume and a half. Uh so It was it was a, it was a cool story. Yeah. And it gave a lot of it wasn't just like, you know, this fluff piece about Odin, it showed a lot of lore about some of the other characters, like said Roger and Whitebeard. Um, you know, re- in retro, you know, like retroactively, uh, this is why I really like doing this podcast with y'all because I, so, like, I appreciate certain things a lot more. And I'm gonna go ahead and give One Piece RGC as well. Whoa, certified RGC, certified RGC, certified RGC. Yeah, they they mopped up uh, these two clowns. Um, yeah. Momo took a took a big step towards being, well, towards not being a coward anymore. Mm-hmm. Luffy looked really cool. I mean, Momo couldn't ask for it, you know. Right. So excited for what comes next. Uh, I guess unless your name is Christian Espinal. I love this chapter, but there is another chapter that uh, stole my heart a little bit. So you know. 